All right, so we are going to pick up where we left off with Among the Hidden. So where we left off in chapter 17, Luke um, was listening to Jen, and Jen was telling her about the rally, and she's super excited about it. But Luke doesn't seem to feel the exact same way. So let's see what happens. I, Luke said, he couldn't look at Jen's triumphant grin. I don't think I, he thought about how terrifying it was just running back and forth between his house and Jen's. Even this morning, on his third run through their yard, his heart had pounded so hard. He'd wondered if it could burst from fear. And in the yard, at, at least he was sure, or as sure as he could be, that no one was watching. How could Jen think he would dare go out in public, where he knew people could see him, people in government, no less, and say, I'm a third child, I want to be treated like everyone else. Scared, Luke said softly. Jen said softly. Luke could only nod. Jen turned back to the computer. Well, I am too, she said matter-of-factly. She typed something that looked back at Luke, then looked back at Luke. Some, but don't you think it'll be a relief? No more hiding, no more pretending, just being free? Luke wondered if he'd always misunderstood the meaning of the word relief. Jen's rally sounded like his worst nightmare. You can think about it, she said. You don't have to decide anything today. Now, ready to chat? Luke looked back at the computer screen where rows of words were unfurling. Carlos, it's 105 here, and my parents think it's a waste to run the AC. It's 105 here, and my parents think it's a waste to run the AC during the day. Can you say heartless? Sean, why don't you just crank it up and turn it off again right before they get home? That's what Pat and I do. They'll never know. Carlos, yeah, but my parents probably read their electric bill. Yolanda, so what are they going to do? Ground you? Carlos, good point. I'm searching for the temp control right now. Yolanda, where's Jen? Sean, you know she never gets up this early. Carlos, curses. My parents have the temp control locked somehow. Told you they were evil. Where's Jen? I can't wait for her sarcastic comment. Luke read the words Jen was typing. I'm right here, and Sean, I do get up early. I just don't always choose to see you first thing. And Carlos, what's wrong? Is there sweat in your eyes? There's only one R in sarcastic. And she hit another key, and the words appeared right up with everyone else's. They were followed quickly by another line. Sean, good morning to you too, Jen. Glad to see you're still among the living. Jen typed quickly, no, just among the hidden. Not the same thing at all. Then she sent it to. What is this, Luke asked, some sort of game? He remembered Jen mentioning a Carlos before and never explaining who he was. Were these some sort of computerized imaginary friends? Carlos, Yol Sean, Yolanda, they're all of our third children. Sean's even got a brother, Pat, who's a fourth child. This is how I talk to them. Luke watched the next line of type appear. Carlos, thanks for the sympathy, Jen. But how? Luke asked, still doubtful. Oh, you know, it's the net, Jen said. If you've got a spare hour or two sometime, I'll give you the technical Google to, to explain it. All I care about is that it works. I'd die without someone to talk to. She was typing even as she talked. Luke craned his head so what she wrote, to see what she wrote. Guess what? The kid I told you about, Luke, is here with me. Quickly, three Hi, Lukes appeared on the screen. Luke fought down panic. But the government, he said, they'll find me. Jen playfully slugged his arm. Chill, okay? Nobody from the government can get into this chat room. We all use a password. Just third children, you know? Just third children know it. And anyhow, even if someone else read this, what would they know? Just that someone in the world, there's a, somewhere in the world there's a kid named Luke? Big deal. But they can trace you through the computer and then they'd find me too. Luke's heart was still pounding. Look, if they could trace people through the computer or through this chat room, wouldn't they have already found me a long time ago? Jen asked. Luke tried to think clearly. Your parents, he said. You said they bribe people, so you're safe. But mine? Jen was shaking her head. No, I'm not safe, she said grimly. Even my parents couldn't bribe the population police if they found me. Maybe to keep them from looking, but maybe not even that. The population police get some ridiculously big reward for every illegal they find. Why do you think I hide it all? Why do you think we have to have the rally? Everybody ought to be safe, and nobody should have to use bribes just to walk down the street or go to a mall or take a ride in a car. Luke glanced back at the computer screen where the conversation continued. How did all those people find out the password? He asked. How did you? Well, I created the chat room, so I made it up, Jen said. And I knew a couple of other shadow kids, and I got my parents and their parents to get the password to them. And then some of those kids spread the password to other kids they knew. Last time I counted, I had contact with 800 kids. Luke shook his head. He didn't think even his parents knew that many people. 
So what is the password? He asked. Free, Jim said. It's free. Chapter 19. Luke left Jim's that day with a pile of books and, a compu and computer printouts clutched to his chest. Some reading material for you, she'd, ask, she'd said. So you'll, un you'll understand. Back in his own room, Luke sat down in his bed and opened the first book. It was thick and carried its title in ominous black letters, The Population Disaster. The type inside was small and closely spaced. Luke read a sentence at random. While debate continues over the carrying capacity of the earth, he skipped ahead. If the total fertility rate is in, du in undu industrialized countries had remained at or below 2.1, Luke saw that reading this book would be like puzzling out the letters they had got from the government. He glanced at the other two books, The Famine Years Revisited and The Population Reversal. They looked no easier. The computer printouts were at least brief, but both the problem of the shadows and the population law, our country's biggest mistake, were full of big words. Luke sighed. He was tempted to put the books aside and just ask Jen to explain them to him. And he might have, except for what she'd said as she'd begun handing them to him. Oh my gosh, I didn't think. You can read, can't you? Of course, Luke answered stiffly. I was reading in the chat room, wasn't I? Yes, but you could have been... Oh, never mind. I've offended you, haven't I? Me and my big mouth. It wouldn't have been anything to be ashamed of, even if you couldn't. Oh, I'm making things worse. I'll shut up. Here. And it had seemed to Luke that she pulled even bigger books off the bookshelf after that. Now he resolutely turned to the beginning of the population disaster and began reading. Since some elements of the overpopulation crisis were foreseen in the 1800s, an uninformed observer could only <clears throat> wonder why humankind came so near to total annihilation. But... Luke reached for the dictionary and settled in for the long haul. It rained for the next several days, so Luke read constantly, not even tempted to race over to Jim's instead. He could hear Dad banging around downstairs, stomping in and out of the barn or the machine shed. Now that the harvest was in, Luke thought Dad might be bored without the pigs to take care of. So Luke read cautiously, always ready to shove his population book under his pillow and replace it with one of the adventure books. The preparation paid off on the fourth day when he heard Dad's footsteps on the stairs. Hey, Luke. What are you up to? Nothing, Luke said, turning Treasure Island right side up at the very last moment. Dad didn't notice. Want to play cards? They played Romeo on Luke's bed. Luke could feel the corner of the population disaster poking his back through our, out the entire game, and he kept wanting to ask Dad about what he was learning. He spent most of the first game biting his tongue. Dad won. Again? Dad asked, shuffling the cards. If you don't have any work you've got to do, in November, with no livestock, only work I got now is figuring out how we're going to pay our bills once the hog money runs out. Isn't there some way to grow stuff inside during the winter? Like down in the basement with special lights, lots of water, and extra minerals? And then you could sell it, Luke asked without thinking. He just finished reading a chapter in the population book about hydroponics. They had squinted. Seems I did hear tell of that once. Luke won the next hand. Didn't, Dad didn't seem to be concentrating. At the end, Dad said, mind if we quit now? Luke was terrified Dad would ask where he'd heard the, of hydroponics. So he just said, no problem. Dad left muttering, growing food inside. Hmm. Luke wished he'd had the nerve to ask about the population law or the famines or even some family history. Once he got past the dense language, the books Jen had loaned him were full of revelations. As best he could understand it, the world had simply gotten too full of people about 20 years earlier. Poor countries had it particularly bad, and people there often starved or were malnourished. But then something worse happened. Terrible droughts struck the parts of the world that always grew the most food. For three years, they grew almost nothing. People everywhere starved. In Luke's country, the government began rationing food, only allowing people to have 1,500 calories a day. And to make sure there was food, they seized control of all food production. They, fact they forced factories that had made junk food to crank out healthy food instead. They forced farmers to move to land that would be more likely to produce. Is that why we don't live near our grandparents? Luke wanted to ask his parents, but the government didn't think that was enough. They wanted to make sure there would never be more people than the farmers could feed, so they passed the population law too. In the evening, spooning in his stew or cutting up his meat, Luke felt pangs of guilt now. Perhaps someone was starving somewhere because of him, but the food wasn't there or wherever the starving people were. It was here on his plate. He ate it all. Luke, you're so quiet lately. Is everything all right? Mother asked one night when he waved 
when he waved away second helpings of cabbage. I'm fine, he said, and went back to eating silently. But he was worrying, worrying that maybe the government was right and that he shouldn't exist. Only when he got to the two print computer printouts did he begin to feel better. One of the articles began, the population law is evil. The other said hundreds of children are hidden, mistreated, starved, neglected, abused, even murdered for no reason. Forcing children into shadows can be, can be counted as genocide. How can this be? He asked Jen a week later when he finally got a chance to go back to her house. How can the books and the articles be so different? She handed him a glass of soda. What do you mean? She asked. Luke pointed to the population disaster. This book says the human race would have gone extinct if we hadn't had the population law. And this, he held up and shook the population, the problem of the shadows article. This says the population law was totally unnecessary and cruel. It says there was plenty of food, even during the famines, except that the barons were hoarding it. Belatedly, he remembered that Jen was a baron. Sorry. Jen shrugged, not the least bit offended. So what's the truth? Luke asked. Jen shook potato chips into a bowl. Well, think about it. The government allowed those books to be published. They probably even paid for them. So of course they're going to say that the, what the government wants people to believe. They're just propaganda. Lies. But the articles, the authors of those, probably put themselves at risk getting the information out. So they're right. Luke pondered that. Then why'd you make me read the books? He asked. So you understood how stupid the government is, Jen said. So you'd understand why we have to make them see the truth. Luke looked at the stack of thick books on the Talbot's kitchen counter. They looked so official, so important. Who was he to say they weren't true? All right, we're going to stop there.